Why, hello there once again, YouTube. How you guys doing today? All right, so uh, here are one day all magnitudes for California. It is making my computer glitch like crazy. 1,879 reported for the California area. Almost all of them occurring within the coastal volcanic field in the Ridgecrest area. Ongoing swarming and aftershock activity. Now, we talked about this a few videos ago where the magma chamber at Coastal Volcanic Field is located right in this location right here. Now, we noticed that there was a big gap in seismicity right in this location right here. Well, it looks like it's starting to get filled in by a good amount of earthquakes. And we just had a magnitude 4.1 right in the northern section, the north northwestern section of Coastal Volcanic Field right up here. I don't know if it's volcanic in nature. Could be. I don't know, just want to let you guys know that I could be squeezing it out like a tube of toothpaste. But even if there was a volcanic eruption in this area, it wouldn't be too crazy. Because it's mainly uh, rhyolitic magma, which is very, very thick and can be sort of explosive. It can it can be if it reaches critical pressure, right? Um, maybe we could see maybe some lava domes, maybe even a lava flow. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm just saying that's probably what's going to happen in this area if volcanic eruptions occur. I'm not saying for sure if they will or not, but I definitely think it is in the cards. I definitely think it is possible, especially with this amount of seismicity occurring right near Coastal Volcanic Field. For the past seven days, all magnitudes, there have been way more than my earth, uh, than my computer can handle. Let's see here. 8,653 reported earthquake events, and we already know that S, uh, the Caltech Earthquake Observatory people, they did say that they cannot report all of them. The data is simply saturated with so many earthquakes, just so many of them occurring, that they really cannot report them all. So this number is likely much, much higher. And if you look at the data, earthquakes are still occurring constantly, guys. It's still very active down in this area. But again, we're going to take a look at this uh, magnitude 4.1 and many, many more earthquakes afterwards. Let's see. 4.1 was right here. Then there was a 2.4. Then there was a 3.7, 2.6, 1.8, 1.7. All within a very short time frame. All within the past hour or so. Let's go take a look at the event page. It's very shallow. It says negative 0.3 kilometers in depth. Uh, that may be changed. Remember, uh, ne a negative depth does not mean it's occurring above surface. Obviously, earthquakes cannot occur above the surface. That's impossible. Because earthquakes are when one fault slips past another, or when mag is trying to break through, or anything that has to do with the earth itself. It can't happen in the air, unless it's like an air burst from a meteor or an explosion. Three people reported feeling this earthquake. Let's go to origin. Phases. Quick arrival time once. It seems like WMF in the CI network broadband vertical was the closest seismic station to this. So we're going to take a look at them, the seismic program swarm, just real quick. Here we have station WMF in the CI network, dash dash location code, uh, broadband vertical. Now, this is the past 24 hours or so, as of 12.15 p.m. Pacific Time, July 10th, 2019. Look at all of these earthquakes, guys. And they're occurring so large that the autoscale feature kicked in and... Some of the smaller events you can't see in the web recorder, but you can obviously clearly see them with the spectrogram and seismogram plots. Look at all of these. This is way early. This is about um, maybe 18, 20 hours ago. Look at this. Constant, 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 constant. Over and over and over. And over. It doesn't stop. Look at that. Look at that. Just it, it just does not stop. The seismicity down there is not stopping. Here we have a very weird event. It looks like two earthquakes occurring. Two or three of them, actually. Now let's scroll down to the whoa 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 whoa. Let's scroll down to the most recent activity down here. That's a very weird earthquake. <clears throat> so, gotta scroll down. See, I'm trying to look for any low frequency background tremor or low frequency earthquakes. Not seeing any. I've been, I've been, I really have been on the lookout lately. Once in a great while, it seemed like a little small low frequency event will pop up here and there, but really not much. Let's go forward, going forward. All of these have high range frequencies, as you can tell. A lot of them are aftershocks due to the magnitude 7.1. And also some of them are the magma chamber's response and the volcanic field's response to the intense seismicity in the area. Because obviously, if you, if you have a magma chamber and you're going to have this amount of seismicity, this strong, 
basically right next to a magma chamber, even within 10 kilometers, it's going to react in some way. It definitely will in some way. It doesn't mean it's going to erupt, but it's definitely going to react. More earthquakes. Now, magnitude 4.1 is this one right here. It reminds me a lot of the Kilauea eruption seismic signatures. Just a little bit. Uh, nothing too, too crazy. Just a 4.1. Maybe a foreshock to a bigger event. We could be seeing a bigger event by the time this uh, earthquake video is up. I don't know, though. I'm probably going to be wrong. Could just be part of the normal aftershocks. But we have seen this about half an hour to an hour before the 6.4. We saw some four shocks in the magnitude 4 and 3 range and before the 7.1. And it's been a little while since we've had an earthquake this large, guys. It's been over a day, I believe. A day, day to, uh, one to two days since we've seen a good 4.1 and many, many more earthquakes. Look at all those, guys. But the thing is, these earthquakes are not occurring down near the Ridgecrest area along that fault zone. They are occurring. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Come on, buddy. They're occurring up here. Now remember we said the magma chamber pretty much resides in this location. Here's the fault zone that ruptured from the magnitude 7.1 and caused basically a two mile crack. Yeah, pretty crazy. So these earthquakes, the 4.1 and the increase in seismicity after the 4.1 is occurring right up here in the northern section of the coastal volcanic field. So I do not see it being related to the tectonic activity down here, but I don't know what's going on up here, guys. It, something's going on. It's definitely a good idea to keep an eye on it, just in case, because then again, this is a volcanic field. But even if it did erupt, it really would not cause that much harm or damage, because the population in this area is very sparse, and the eruption likely would not be that crazy. But then again, we haven't seen an eruption on the continental United States for, what, since 2004, 2008 with Mount St. Helens, and then 1980 with Mount St. Helens. Really, California, it's been a long time since they've seen a volcanic eruption. And they should be seeing one in the next hundred years, like, almost for sure. So, very interesting, guys. Again, here's the 4.1 going forward. I believe that was a 3.7 right there. Many, many strong aftershocks in the northern section of the coastal volcanic field. See more aftershocks, more aftershocks occurring in rapid succession. Rapid fire swarm, guys. Rapid fire swarm. And as of the most recent data stream, we see earthquakes still do continue. As of 12.19 p.m. Pacific Time, July 10th, 2019. My computer's glitching out a little bit. But let's move on to Mount Hood. Here we are at the Mount Hood Stratovolcano in Northern Oregon, which recently saw a good-sized rapid-fire swarm. Very energetic. Magnitudes weren't crazy. I believe the largest was a 2.3? 2.2 or 2.3. We'll look at that in just a second. But the thing is, it was a rapid-fire swarm. Occurred in a very short time frame. Let's go to 7 days, all magnitudes. Give it a second, because there are just so many earthquakes in the world that my computer just glitches really bad. Come on, buddy. So we're seeing in the past seven days, 111 earthquakes reported for Mount Hood, just under the southern section of the base near Government Camp, Oregon. Scrolling all the way down, notice how it started at 2 UTC on the 8th. So all of these earthquakes, this is not just the past seven days. I do have it set to seven days all magnitudes. But the thing is, is all of these earthquakes being reported started at about 2 UTC on July 8th, which was only about, what, two days ago? A little bit over two days ago for 2 UTC July 8th. And we see 111 reported. Yeah, that's pretty large. We talked about this in one of my recent videos. Um, they supposedly, PNSN doesn't uh, have a huge explanation about previous swarms at Mount Hood. But they did say the swarms can range anywhere from 50 reported earthquakes to 4 reported earthquakes. This has 111. And I have to say, only about 30 of these occurred on the 8th. The large majority of this swarm, 111 earthquakes, the large majority of this swarm was on July 9th. Within a few hours of a time frame, and you'll see that in just a second, very similar to the rapid fire swarms that we see at Yellowstone from time to time. So let's take some data from TDH, which resides, I believe, right in this location right here. I was going to use TIM, T-I-M-B, which is right here. It's a little bit closer to the swarm. But TDH picks up these events much better. I don't know why TIM does not show the earthquakes that well at all. I have not done an analysis page on this earthquake swarm yet. I'm going to be working on that probably all this evening. 
because there's a lot of plots and a lot of data that I want to put into a blog post. So it'll probably be another day until that's out. And I'll also include the seismic audio to that as well. So just keep an eye out for that. I'll let you guys know when that's out. Now let's take a look at the swarm in the seismic program swarm. Now here we are on the seismic program swarm TDH UW network. Very close to the earthquake swarm in question. The second closest seismic station actually. Um, mid UTC day, July 8th. Again, I just want to let you guys know that we did see a very small swarm and they reported, I believe, a total of 30 events. I believe it was a total of 30 events they reported as part of this earthquake swarm on the 8th. Now, it basically calmed and uh, people were like, oh, it's just a typical Mount Hood swarm. Got a few more aftershocks here. Got a few aftershocks here. Another aftershock here. Uh, but boom. Yeah surprised everybody not every single one of these is an earthquake we do see a calibration pulse right here which they use to keep the station in tip-top shape obviously that is not an earthquake please don't tell me you think that's an earthquake that's not <laughs> and then we see another malfunction also not an earthquake and then something weird up here just something very odd look at this i have no freaking clue what this could be right here I have no idea what could even cause ground vibrations to look like that. It almost looks mechanical. But I am going to make an analysis page on this. Remember, guys? Let's go to the spectrogram. Let's zoom all the way out so we can get a full look at the earthquake swarm. The main earthquake swarm. Now, remember, all of the 111 earthquakes, almost the, the large majority of them occurred within this time frame right here. And then there's a space of maybe six, seven hours of nothing. And then we saw an additional increase in seismicity down here definitely one of the most notable swarms at mount hood not for magnitudes we've seen larger magnitudes years ago many 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 years ago i believe the largest was like a 3.2 or 3.5 or something like that magnitudes aren't crazy but the energy involved in the sheer amount of earthquakes is just mind-boggling for the mount hood area this is typical of what we would see at yellowstone right I mean, we see these rapid-fire swarms a lot at Yellowstone. I even dedicated a whole page on my website showing plots to rapid-fire swarms at Yellowstone. These are very, very similar. So, I thought that was very interesting, guys. Very, very intriguing. PNSN.org. They did put out a blog post about it. They did say it was tectonic in nature, and I... And I you know, I kind of do agree with them a little bit because there really isn't showing any deformation. It's a little bit too early to get the GPS deformation data to see if there really is deformation going on there. But these are occurring a little bit too fast, in my opinion, really to be tectonic. But then again, look at the Ridgecrest area down there on that fault that ruptured that they didn't even know existed. Look at all the tectonic aftershocks. It's pretty much just like this. But the thing is, is these type of earthquake swarms can also be caused by fluid flow. And not just from magma, guys. It could be hydrothermal fluids, gas and brine, or magma itself. But then, if it was magma itself, we would see a good amount of low-frequency volcanic earthquakes, which actually we see at Lassen Peak from time to time. We did see a few low-frequency volcanic earthquakes in June. I believe it was June 11th and June 12th we did see a few of those at Lassen Peak. Again, Mount Hood, seeing earthquakes, guys. And this station cuts off the amplitudes at about 2,000 amplitude count, but we can still see the duration of the event and get a good idea of the size of each event. Going down, turn that off. Let's see the most recent data. Okay, the most recent data as of 12.29 p.m. Pacific Time, July 10th, 2019, we see very, very teeny tiny aftershock. So the swarm still is ongoing, but it's in its diminishing phase. Would not be surprised if we see another burst of seismicity associated with this swarm, but I believe it could be over. I do believe it's possibly over. Again, keep an eye out for my new blog post about this Mount Hood earthquake swarm, which surpri surprised everybody. Look at the energy, guys. I, mean, I just got to show it one more time. Look at that. That is crazy. I emailed Steve Malone for a list of past earthquake swarms at Mount Hood that I because I'm going to compare this swarm and its energy to past swarms at Mount Hood and see if they line up, see if anything's different. Also, guys, I'm going to try to reply to all your comments again, but I'm becoming a lot more busier trying to do schooling and work and stuff like that. So I'll still try to reply to all your comments. But if you need anything or if you want really want me to see something, please shoot me an email at WashingtonMagma at Yahoo.com, which my email is in the description box below as well. God bless, guys. Hope you have a great day.
And remember, the truth is always considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. I just got to keep using that. I kind of left that out from one of my videos in the past few months, and I completely forgot about my quote that I used to say. Remember, I used to say it at the end of all my videos? Well, I'm going to say it now again, guys. The truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth. <laughs> God bless, guys. Have a great day.